Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion, which you might be able to see around me, it's tropical houseplants. Now today I want to talk about a really really cool philodendron, so an aroid, that I've recently, relatively recently, probably about a month or two ago, added to my collection. There was a bit of a story behind what happened to it, and then I ended up having a second one. So let me pick up the plant and I will show you what I want to talk about today. So the plant I want to talk about today, if I bring it up, you might be able to see this newest leaf there, is the Philodendron Plowmanii. So a very, very cool plant in terms of morphology of the leaf. It's got ruffled leaves, slightly pillowy. You might be able to see it's picking up some of that silvery sheen if I tip down the older leaf you might be able to see that a bit more clearly. Yes you can see that hopefully a bit more clearly there. But um, the other thing that makes this a bit more unique and I'm hoping it might come up on the camera there if I bring it in really close. Yes there you go. You can see it's got very 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 cool ruffles on the petioles. And in terms of the ruffling I think part of that might be in order for it to help it grip better in its natural environment. I still need to do a bit of research to see probably why there is that kind of ruffling that's happening on the petiole. But plants morphology or the way that plants have adapted to their environment is never really by fluke. There is usually, if a plant has a feature like the silveriness is probably a feature of how it deals with its environment. Maybe it's dealing with too much bright light so it needs to reflect some of that back. As would be the ruffling, it might just be so that water can trickle off faster so that water doesn't sit on the leaf and so on and so forth. So there's definitely going to be a reason why there's ruffling on the petioles. Now the story that I wanted to talk about, and both of my Plamanii's are in Lechuza Pond, but when I'd originally got this plant, neither one of these two leaves were the leaves that it came with. It actually came with a leaf that was slightly larger than this newest leaf that it has. And unfortunately what happened is it was the bottom of a plant shelf and another plant in a very heavy terracotta pot fell down and it snapped that one leaf <laughs> off. <laughs> I was a bit distraught to say the least because I'd only had this plant probably less than a week. And I did try to reattach the leaf petiole because it snapped the petiole kind of in the middle. And I tried to attach one part to the other and wrap it up with some plants, kind of cellophane, I don't know what it's called, but it's essentially what you might use to graft plants because people were saying it might take, I know that when something cuts off at the stem, you can reattach the stem and it can reconnect. I wasn't finding a lot on the petiole. I don't know if I did it correctly, but that leaf truly dis, dis <laughs> um, declined and died off in a couple of weeks, unfortunately. Um, you might be able to see there is another little growth point there and hopefully that is coming up on the camera. But that's essentially how this started. It was literally a stump for a very long period of time. I did leave, leave a bit of that petiole that was still snapped off even after the rest of the leaf had died off on there because it, still it was still green. It could still photosynthesize to a certain point. I pulled back on the watering a bit and eventually I did get a new Caterpillar, and then I got a new petiole and then I got a new leaf which was this one and I was quite impressed that it came in quite as large I thought it was going to go revert back to a very very juvenile form but you can see already by the second leaf it's kind of almost the same size as the original leaf that I bought this with. Now what happened was at that point I was just like oh this might die and it's such a shame and I finally found it and I'm just like let me see if I can find a replacement for it if not and I actually did find a secondary one which was around the same price because this one was really, really affordable and I snapped it up as soon as I found it. So let me show you the second one that I bought. So this is the second one that I did buy. You can see this got less of the silveriness on the leaves. Some of the newer leaves that came up in my care and I'm trying to find which one came up first. It would have been this one. So it still had some of the ruffliness and it still has a tiny bit of the silveriness there. This, I think, think actually this was the second leaf yeah this was the second leaf is kind of growing a bit weirdly this was the third leaf and you might be able to see the other trait of this plant it is a crawler so very similar to the gloriosum or the passizanum it grows along the soil line so it will only ever reach so much of a height now i've had mixed 
findings on this plant in terms of is it a crawler or is it a climber? Some websites will say that it's a crawler, some websites will say that it's a climber. I'm not entirely sure. At the moment I'm growing both of them as crawlers. You can see this one does have a different caterpillar that's coming in. This caterpillar is slightly different. It might just be a slightly more mature one than the other one, but I'm pretty sure both of them are pastazanums. This original leaf, the person that I bought it from on eBay were saying that this was a rescue and it did have some pest pressure, so I did treat it again, even though they said that it was completely fine, just to be on the safe side, but I've not really had any pest pressure on these plants. As I've mentioned, both of these plants are actually in choose a pond and they're both doing really really well. I will water them. I don't have them with a reservoir. I used to have them with a reservoir and I don't think they did as well. So these are ones that I have outside of a reservoir and I just water them normally as I would if they were in soil. But they've really not been particularly fussy plants. Not really. This is almost, for me at least, it's been almost as easy as the Gloriosum. And I know Kaylee Ellen just did a video recently and I think she was talking about the Plamania is one that doesn't ship particularly well. Both of the ones that I got weren't in too bad of a shape. They did take a while to bounce back. The leaves didn't drop off as I said. I lost the leaf on the previous one but that was my own damn fault. But um, they kind of grew quite nicely after that and I think that's kind of echoing what she was saying. It might have a bit of a stressful, stressful situation when it's being shipped but after that it will grow quite happily and it is a very, very beautiful plant. So in terms of care, as I said, it's in pond. I water it without a reservoir. I've kind of estimated in my environment that it's roughly every five to seven days that the pond will dry out and I'll leave it for an extra day of it being dry and then water it. I do use, uh, and I've got a bottle here of liquid gold leaf, a tiny bit of this in the watering every time that I water, the same way that you would do with anything else that's semi hydro, just to inject some nutrients into the growing media, in this case, which is obviously all the little rocks that you get with the pond. I know there's slow release fertilizer, but I always like to supplement that because even when I was growing everything in my aroid soil mix, I still had slow release fertilizer in it, and I also supplemented with more liquid gold leaf when I would water it. So, that's been my experience with this anyway. It's obviously in my conservatory, so it's got slightly higher humidity levels. I have never grown this outside of the conservatory, so I don't know whether or not it would be okay. Possibly. But uh, yeah, in terms of pest pressures, not a huge deal, I would say, with this one. I've not really... You would imagine because of the pillowy leaves, and I'm thinking of the pastazan, and that one will occasionally get spider mites, maybe the odd mealy bug, but again, as I've mentioned before, the mealy bugs might just be my environment because apparently this conservatory loves to like create mealy bugs all the time. I've been treating them for a while now on a whole bunch of different plants, but yeah, no real pest pressures on this, I have to say. Bright and direct lights, as with most philodendron, that doesn't change. And yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about this. Uh, if you've got one of these in your care and your care is slightly different than mine, please do share down below. I'd love to know more about how you're growing it. If you've got experience with one that's a slightly more mature one, can you confirm if it's a crawler or if it's a climber? What's it doing in your situation? Is it growing up a pole or is it growing along the soil line? I'd love to find that out. But yeah, that's everything I wanted to touch on today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.